Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian from USA.Patriot.Cards. And it's Monday. It's the week beginning after the Dallas Card Show. And what a card show it was. Oh, man, you can tell by my title, Dallas Card Show, what just happened, that this was different from any other show, let me tell you. Straight out the gate, let me tell you, different from any other show. Of course, I didn't get any footage. Let me just put that right out there, too. Um, and it's just, it's, I'm kidding myself if I think I'm going to be able to go to a show. I don't have a cameraman. Um, not that my friend I went with, Josh, wouldn't have minded to be my cameraman, but it just seems a little, I don't know, put on. Um, but I love all the, the videos that like the channels that do the card show, you know, cameraman and they do all the deals. I love that stuff. So it's not that, um, that those people are, are putting on it's that it felt weird to me <clears throat> so I am very sorry about that I did try to take pictures as I could there wasn't a lot to take pictures of okay there was I did two deals two deals one was a hundred and fifty dollar deal and one was what I want to talk about one was what just happened type of a deal um, I guess we should start with uh, the vibe of the show it was packed. The um, We got there early on Saturday. We got a room. We stayed Saturday night. I did hear that the main parking garage was overflowed by noon on Saturday, so people had to start parking across the street. Crazy. Um, and I, I would say 95% of the dealer tables had signs that said buying. And most of them were aggressively um, asking about, because I have two cases, I had had two cases, now I have one case, we'll get to that in a minute, but had two cases, um, and they're those body card cases, they're big, There's they probably hold, I don't know, 8,500 slabs each, and I had a dolly, and I was like pulling the little dolly through, but there were a lot of tables that were like, hey man, do you have anything to sell? Normally, they don't, they're not that engaging, you know, normally they just have a sign buying, but they're not like stopping down to ask you. Had several people stop down to ask me. Um, I, I'm trying to think of the order I want to do this. Uh, let's ease into this. Let me show you some, I have some pictures pulled up because um, I did take pictures to comp cards, uh, which works out nicely because then I can just download them here and show them to you. Kind of what I was looking at. Um, this was cool. This is an uncut silver sheet from 2020-21 Panini Prison Basketball. This was, they had like a golden um, display set up that had some awesome cards that were, I guess, at golden or going to be coming to a golden auction soon. They had a sweet, I should have taken a picture and I didn't, a sweet Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, logo man auto but um, this was cool I did have to get a picture of this because not only is it an uncut sheet of prism it's a silver sheet so super cool there uh, let's see what's next okay so this is a uh, eminence uh, Dirk that a friend of mine who sets up all the time at the shows Alan he had this I thought about this moderately hard um i already have a silver bar dirk uh, from impeccable not autoed so this didn't really do much for me um it's four out of ten i know eminence is a high-end product it'd be cool to have you know a dirk from that from that product but uh, at the end of the day i just that was one thing i just couldn't bring myself to spend any money um which is weird because normally I'm not like the one. Normally I trade mostly and I'll throw in cash as needed, but um, I just couldn't, I did nothing, no cards like really were like, oh, psh, gotta go get that. Like I never felt that way. And so that Dirk was easy for me to walk away from. Here's a 2020 Ju uh, Justin Herbert. Um, it was a cool card. I. I think I checked on the price and it was, I don't know, make me an offer and um, started looking up comps. And as soon as they, you know, here's a trick <coughs> that dealers will do. 
Oh, I don't know. It's a buddies of mine. First of all, no, it's not. Second of all, uh, then if it's your buddies, you would know exactly what he wants. Um, so when you ask him what's the price, they should know. Make me an offer. So I started looking up comps, and then he started like making well. The now the last comp was duh, 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 you know. So then I was like, okay, whatever. I think this was twenty k plus, which just isn't for me. Great card, but. I would have tried to make a play around like maybe 15, but um, I don't even remember what the comps bared out on this card, but it was too high. Uh, this player was probably the hottest player along with Trevor Lawrence. This Justin Fields um, Silver Prism Auto had 1,500 on it. I think I offered him 1,200, and... He said last comp was 18. I said, yeah, but the last comp before that was something much less than 15. I think around 12 maybe. Um, and of course the news had broke. And so there was a high comp that somebody went and got this card. It was, it, you know, like I said, 1800. I just knew 15 was too much. I wasn't inspired to go get this card. And then I was watching the, another video, I think from the Philly show. And somebody sold their Justin uh, Fields Silver Auto PSA 10 for 1200 And it moved. And this one didn't. So, um, interesting how that works. Let's see, what else do I have? Ah, this one. Man. So, my friend, we affectionately call him Baldy, has this card. He's had it for the last two shows at least. I think he's from Minnesota. He flies in for all the shows. But we talked about this. Um, I did a live on Friday night um, that you can find if you search Dallas Card Show. I didn't post it to my, my uh, actual YouTube channel, but it's out there. Anyway, we talked about how overpriced this card was. I think the last comp on this card is like $800. I love this card. I liked the, I liked the Detroit Lions back when they had him and Barry Sanders. And I have a few cool Barry Sanders cards. I wanted to be at a thousand for this, um, but he just wouldn't budge. So um, yeah, had to let that go. But very cool card, something you don't see. It's an X Fractor. It's out of fifty, so that was cool. Ah, the Nolan Ryan throwing football. Now here's one I did sell, one of many, by might I add. But this wasn't a single deal by itself. I was, th was flipping through my case. I was trying to trade for a Justin Fields National Treasures, but um, he was just not inspired by what I had. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, he did like this. He pulled it out, looked at comps. Last comp was 80. I, he, he said, how much do you you know want for it? I said 70, and so he bought it from me. But um, cool card. I, I have a, a mini Nolan Ryan PC, but that wasn't hard to let go. Here's a cool card. It's the No Protectors Refractor uh, from 98 Finest, Dirk Rookie. Uh, what's cool about this card is, I guess it it didn't have the, the sticker, the film, um, that most of the Finest cards had. And then if you flipped it over, and I should have taken a picture, I didn't, the back is refractored too. So the whole card is refractored. My friend Cody owns this card. I like this card. I've been kind of telling him I wanted to get this card. He he offered me a pretty decent price on it too, uh, a little bit lower than this. I just was like totally uninspired to do any purchasing, so I just passed. But maybe I'll recircle on that. Uh, okay, here's some stuff that I just saw uh, was interesting. I'd never seen this 2020 Contenders International Ticket, um, the Slovenia International Ticket out of 25. I had no idea if 1200 is a good price or not. There's no way I was paying it, but cool card. Uh, here's one, Blue Scope Herbert. This sells every single day, but I remember my friend Josh had this card. I, lo I just love this card. I love the scopes. Um, I think he wanted 300 and all the comps were 250 around 250 And I just was just like totally like, I didn't even want to offer. Like, I was just like, oh. I didn't even want to haggle with him. I was like, ah, that's cool. I'll find this on eBay. But I really won't because I won't go looking for it. It was just an easy pick, uh, easy card to walk away from when he's $50 over comps on a card that sells just about every day. This is cool. 2002 SP Game Used to Golf, Tiger Woods. Um, 
I don't know anything about the golf market. I inquired about this. I think it was like 4,500 bucks. He gave me a bunch of reasons why that was a steal and told me he already had this guy come by and check on it and that guy. And if it wasn't sold, he had a deal in place and all that, all that, that normal like bull crap that you hear from dealers. Um, I just thought it was interesting. I told him, I gave him the, the bull crap back that you hear from buyers. I'll circle back. <laughs> I'm going to walk around and walk the show. I'll come back. Everybody knows that's bullcrap. Most of the time, nobody walks back. And most of the time, dealers don't have another deal in place or another offer in place. Uh, this was cool. Dirk, uh, SP Authentic, out of 3,500. Jim meant 10. Just thought it was cool. Let's see. Um, this one was cool. This guy that had this had just picked it up. Uh, what scared me right away was that wasn't graded. So, uh, not that I was anywhere near like trying to pick this up. He didn't even have a price. He just kept going on and on about how he just got it and how awesome it was. It's a it's like a blue ice out of fifteen, Trevor Lawrence. It's a cool card. I mean, once he gets it graded, if it comes back pretty decent, he'll uh, have no problem moving that. Trevor Lawrence, like I said, him and Justin Fields were as hot as you could get. This was cool. Emmett Blue Shimmer, um, the guy was twice the size of the last comp, which wasn't a lot, but just, again, not going to play that game. Uh, this one was cool in Trade Night. Uh, one of the dealers uh, that had the, the, their table in the Trade Night room. What's cool about this is it's a Juan Soto x Fractor for 2018 Topps Chrome Rookie Auto. So you don't see many of these. These are numbered out of 125. Uh, I think he wanted, what do you want on this? I want to say 4500 but I could be wrong. It was right around comps. Um, mostly I was like uh, taking pictures of this and letting my friend JR know who. JR, uh, who's the, the guy that I did the, the blue fast break Luca trade with uh, videos back. Um, he actually came up from San Antonio, and we linked up. So me and him and Josh hung out all weekend. It was cool. He's a great guy. I was uh, very happy to meet him, Jr. Uh, if you watched this, I had a great time, man. And you're uh, you're definitely good people. So next time you want to come up here for another show, definitely let me know. And we'll do it again. But uh, ultimately, we both decided that mm, sticker auto just uninspired to go that hard. I mean, if you're going to go that hard, you might as well get a first bowling. But it was just a cool card because you never see that. Here's another card that's cool, and you can see how grossly overpriced. I mean, I just don't see how an unlicensed card of a Hall of Famer and then someone that's very exciting, granted, I get that, can do 15K or anywhere close to that. Like, I just don't. There's a Dirk Luca Auto, just like this, but it's licensed. Um... That sells for around nine. So I just this this guy is probably twice as high as he should be, which wasn't uncommon. The dealers were high, very high. This was a cool one. This might have been right along uh, comp, right around the. I didn't even comp this, so but so I don't know. It just seems like five k for this card isn't a total overshoot. Um, I'm not big on Jason Tatum. I had some Tatum stuff. I cleared it all out. Um, I can see why they didn't grade the auto. They authenticated it. There's a little thin line here. Still a really cool card. It's the premium. It's from Contenders, but it's the premium, so it's all fully uh, chrome. Cool card for somebody out there. Just not me. Uh, let's see what else. <coughs> Pardon me. There was another guy in that... <clears throat> that I've been doing some bantering back and forth uh, on Instagram with Mr. Timothy. And um, Mr. Timothy had this blue um, Giannis Prism Auto. Gorgeous card. He was twice as high on this uh, as last comp. And he had a blue ice Luca. If you're a follower of this channel, you know I want that card, right? Last comp on it was 24 definitely has to come down from there. If it, if it were to go to auction today, I don't think it would end at 24. It's just too 
it's too high. I don't think the market's going to support that. And then, frankly, Luke has been less than inspiring lately. So, I mean, his big cards are going to really start to see some some um, value lost if they go to auction. Anybody who knows anything about Luca, the Luca market knows not to sell the big cards right now. Anyway, last comp on that blue ice, 24K. He had it. I asked him, hey, man, how much do you want for that? 40K. Get the fuck out of here. Excuse my language, kids. Mr. Timothy, if you're out there watching, not only is that ridiculous, just tell me it's not, just say, you know what, man, I'm not even ready to talk about, like, what I want for this, or comps, or trades, or anything. I'm just kind of not sure I want to move it. Total respect for that. 100% understand. Matter of fact, I'd probably be there, too. I, you know, I just don't want to move it. But to go to 40K when the last comp was 24K makes me, A, think you're crazy. B, think, like, you disrespect me by even, like, mentioning that. You don't think I can look at a, like, a comp and see that you're out of bounds immensely? So, like, I don't know, at the, at the risk of burning a bridge, I doubt I'll ever mess with you again. I doubt I'll ever, like dialogue with you because you're insane so yeah i said it <laughs> you're insane 40k when the last comp is 24 and it's on its way down is insane it's insulting and how dare you nah fuck it you can say whatever you want <laughs> this is funny people are funny man god they love their cards uh here is a tw 2008 bowman chrome kershaw i thought it was cool cool card i hate kershaw he's a local guy though and I like to collect local guys. I didn't even acquire on this. Just thought it was cool, so I snapped a pick. This surprised me a little bit. I didn't realize this this card was so cheap, but it is in six, 80 bucks. Pretty cool. Didn't pick it up. Um, I was sort of this, to me. I've said it before. The '86 Fleer is the most Jordan is the most boring card in the um, hobby. Doesn't take much to get one. Uh, it's all about the grade for this card, but it's just so, like, you see them all the time. Everybody's got one. But to get one in a nine would be kind of intriguing, but um, I don't know what the, I think this was like nine or 10K. I did comp it just to see, but oh, just, it's boring. It's a paper card, it's just boring. Now, a PSA 10 Jordan would be cool, but those are on their way down big time. Here's an interesting one, uh, Bowman Chrome Tom Brady, 4,400 for the 9.5. I think that was in line with comps. Um, interestingly, when you jump from the base to the refractor, oh my God, the price explodes. I think the the BGS 8 uh, refractors do around 35K. God, that's crazy. Not in the market for Brady, I just, Thought that was a cool card. I looked at this. Guy was high on it. It's 2020. It, I, I'm not a Kaboom guy. Not hard for me to walk away from. If he was under comps, I might, I might, and wanted some cash, I might have considered it, but he wasn't. And um, I just like Luca. What can I, what can I tell you? I'm a sucker for Slovenian basketball players. This was cool. About a thousand dollars over the last comp, I probably could have kicked the tires on it. It's the teal, so it's the perfect color match. Just again, not not really inspired to spend fifty five hundred plus on a quarterback that's in the AFC, unless his name is Mahomes. Man, I've heard nothing uh, but great things about Marcelo Meyer. I try to look at him and say. Could I see this being an iconic card? Could I see Mar does the name Marcelo Meyer? Does it ring like Mike Trout? You know what I mean? Like I try to project. And to to be honest, I kind of like I I I feel like you know he might be uh, the next big thing. I and literally know nothing about him other than what people tell me. This was an interesting card, but yeah. He's not going to be in the big leagues this year, so it's just like, why why grab a card at the beginning of baseball season when all the prices are high, and then wait 
and then watch uh, minor league box scores for the next six months. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, Luis Robert, on the other hand, is somebody that I've heard people say could be a uh, dark horse for MVP, comeback player of the year, like all that stuff. Like Luis Robert was once, you know, the, the next big guy. Um, he struggled a little bit with injuries, had a down year last year. He's still in his early 20s, early to mid 20s. Um, you know, he's the, he's a Latin player, so um, he's got su probably super athletic ability to bounce back and, and have a monster year. This was an interesting card that my friend with the uh, Calvin Johnson had, um, and I almost made a play for this. This this was one card that I halfway considered like, all right, sitting down and getting getting to brass tacks on. But again, I just didn't. Uh, maybe I'll kick myself in a couple months that I didn't. Um, and then there was a pink Mahomes PSA 10 that the guy seemed to be right, you know, a good price. So I think it was 8,500. And then this one was like 15 K. I didn't realize that the price difference in the other parallel, like the other, prism auto parallels of Mahomes versus the the silver silver does much better um but it was it was like that if you saw a decently price like if you saw a card 5k and up and the dealer was just around comps it was like it was a hell of a deal right whoa this guy whoa this guy's giving this card away he's right around comps everybody was super 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 high um which is sort of the th was this the theme can't talk it was the th the th <laughs> no, i really can't talk it was the theme of the show buyers uh were being asked to sell and sellers didn't want to sell it was like the dealers wanted to intake as much as they could and they didn't want to really sell anything uh, they were super price super high priced it's been the other way around the last show or two. It feels like guys were starting to finally realize that if they wanted to move their inventory, they had to they had to be priced right. And um, it's like that lasted for a couple months, and now it's just boom back to like you're not serious about moving this card, and you want to buy my cards, and you want to probably come in around 70%, and then you want to jack it up to 110, 120% of comps, what, and let it sit in your case. So let me get to the what just happened part of the show. So there was a table with a younger guy, probably, I'd say probably late 20s, maybe. I'm almost, I'm 47, so, so mid-20s, maybe. So, uh, you know, mid-20s is young to me. You know, mid-20s is a, is a kid to me. Um, and, he, you know, he's a young kid uh, that had... He had two cards I, I was interested in. He had a uh, first Bowman PSA 10 Juan Soto base auto. Uh, it was around 3,800, which was right around comps. And then he had a Julio Rodriguez refractor first Bowman PSA 10, which was around 3,800... Yeah, it was the refract. Yeah, I remember thinking both cards were right around the same price. It's like which one would I want? Um, both cool cards. Probably the wrong time to get into either one of those cards. But what can I say? I can this. You know, spring is in the air, right? And so, when spring is in the air, baseball cards are what um, my mind tells me to go get because we're about to watch 162 games of baseball and I know it's the wrong time to get that stuff but that's the collector part of me that um, says hell with the you know the trends and hell with the like buying in the offseason selling right before the season stuff um, if there's a baseball player that I'm getting ready to watch and I like I want to get his cards right now in March spring training worst time to buy but um I asked him would he be interested in maybe doing half cash, half trade? Because I had um, one of my cases had um, one of my cases had most of my good stuff in case I saw a card that was like up there, twenty k, thirty k, whatever, and I needed to go get it. Uh, and then one of, one of my cases had all my mid to lower stuff that was going to be perfect for you know like a five k or under trade. Um, and I had a bunch of Otani like updates. Uh, 
uh, what else did it have? Like uh, top series two, um, some optic rookies, like probably 10 or 12 PSA 10 Otani rookies between 80 and 140 bucks. It's like cash money, like easy movers. Otani stuff just explodes. I didn't see any first Bowman Otani's, not one. People are keeping those suckers back. Collectors have gotten those cards and they're just not, they're just not available. Not, I didn't see one in the whole show, but so I was thinking I had some Acunas that that were like that PSA ten. My Soto's already uh, traded or sold or whatever, but um, you know those are cards that dealers are typically like, yes, I will take these. Uh, maybe not at a hundred percent cash value, maybe at ninety percent cash value. You know, leave me a little meat on the bone, but yes, you can you can do half and half toward this bigger card. So. This was right when we got there. We kind of stumbled upon his table. He was up near the front of the main room. And I didn't feel like unstrapping my case from the dolly and then all that stuff. I was like, hey, man, we just got here. Um, I'm just going to kind of like walk the room a little bit, but I will be back. Now, this time I meant it. <laughs> this wasn't a I'll be back, not really. This was an I'll be back and I'm really going to come back. He was like, cool, man, cool. He was like, yeah, he said, what do he say? He goes, now. My cash price, let's say it's thirty-eight hundred, isn't going to be the same as my cash and trades. He's like, I might bump it up from thirty-eight to maybe a thirty-nine or four. I was like, totally fair. Understand? Let's let's do this. I'm just going to walk around a little bit and come back. Well, um, we went to lunch. We came back. We walked some more, and then it was getting about three o'clock. And I'm like, oh yeah, like I want to go like kick the tires on those two um, baseball cards. So we walk back over, and, and he's gone. His table is like empty. His showcases are empty. He was sitting next to Prism God, if you know who Prism God is. Nice guy, Prism God. Um, and I said, hey, where'd your boy go? And he's like, oh, he, he packed up. He's walking the show. He's just walking to be like to go see what's out there. He'll be back. So um, I was like, all right. So we walked on and walked on. And then my friend ran to him, ran into him randomly, like, I don't know, 10 minutes later. And I was somewhere else in a different part of the showroom and my friend was talking to him. I was like, hey man, my buddy wants to, you know, talk to you about a few cards. Remember we were talking about doing half cash, half trade on one of your Sotos or your uh, your J-Rods. He goes, oh yeah, yeah. He's like, um, I'll meet you there in like 10 minutes. And so he did. He went back. He busted all his cards back out, set them back in the case. I come along. And I um, get my low to mid end case and I open it up and he starts thumbing through stuff. And then he like gets through the case and he looks at me and he goes, man, to be honest, dude, there's not really anything in here I would want to trade for. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? Like, how could there's 12 Otani PSA 10 rookies? How could you not want to trade for it? And then he goes, but I'll buy the whole case from you. <laughs> Come here. I'll buy the whole case from you. I was like, hmm. Normally when somebody says something like that and they get aggressive, they want to come in around 70%, lower, 60%. Hey, it's a lot of stuff. Got to leave meat on the bone. Got to have some room. I can do 65%, which normally I'd be like, pack it up. Thanks, man. No thanks. 70% thanks man no thanks 75% mm -mm. 80% mm. <sighs> maybe he said I'll pay you 85% comps I pulled the chair <laughs> I sat down <clears throat> anybody got any paper <laughs> got these like and I, oh, I'll tell you, I'm getting ahead of myself they had these flyers like these little like you know little small little paper flyers uh, about something the table behind us so we grabbed about eight flyers turned them over they were blank on the back and we started going to work he he started comping his friend started comping my friend I was stacking the cards and i was writing down the card name and then the price and then taking 85 percent of that and then writing it down i wish i would have kept all those flyers because i've kind of forgotten I know what most of the cards were, but I kind of forgot. I would just like to have those as a souvenir. Um, 
but I, I don't. They probably got thrown away. But we sat down, and it took about an hour. This was about 3.30, and we knew that the show closed at, at 6. I said, I said, how long is this going to take? He goes, I don't know. We can try and hurry. And I said, okay. And we started down the, the road, and of course, there was a lot of stuff that was tough to comp. Um, there was stuff that, he, that was easy to comp. Uh, how long? We're going to, this is going to be a longer video. We're at 30 minutes right now. Um, I don't want to split this in two because that's just pointless. So, but it's like, this is the best part and it's like 30 minutes deep. What can I do? Um, there were several moments where, okay, I'm trying, let me try to tell you how I was approaching this mentally. Once he said 85%, I was like, I couldn't say yes fast enough. I couldn't sign fast enough. Here's a chance to take all of this stuff that I've separated from the good stuff into this one case. As a matter of fact, I had left the other case in the room because I didn't want to carry around both cases. And I've told you all that before. If you have good stuff that you don't that you only want to sell or use as trade bait if you need to, leave it up in the room. Leave it in a different case. Leave it in your backpack. Whatever. Don't put it next to all your mid to low stuff you're trying to move. Because as soon as they see that premium stuff, they're not going to want this other stuff. They're going to want that stuff. But if you leave it in the room like I did, that stuff's not even around. So it, it couldn't have set itself up better. Um, he, he was starting to comp and um, I was starting to write down. And I knew that I couldn't be a hard, this couldn't be hard. I knew I had to make it as easy as possible. I also knew that I had to fight for some comps. I had to fight for some value where I could. But overall, if I fought too hard, I had this sense in my head that he would just be like, you know what, man, I'm sorry to waste you. I'm sorry, but I just... I don't know. This we're gets getting late and this and that. I just had a feeling like if I don't make this super easy, then he's gonna pull out. And he did. He started, I could tell. He started to sort of like regret running his mouth, talking about, I'll buy the whole case from you. Because I don't know that he necessarily thought I would say yes. I don't know what he was thinking, to be honest. I, I have no idea. But I didn't seem overzealous, like, okay, okay. I kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit. I'll give this to myself. Normally I don't like, I think I'm a pretty shrewd negotiator. I think I, I think I can match vibes and sort of give this, the buyer, uh, or seller or trade partner kind of what they need to hear, want to hear. I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'll say, uh, you know, I'll, I can count my flaws like on, you know, both hands, both feet. Like, trust me, I'm not somebody who comes out and just like, boasts but I but if there's one gift I think I have when it comes to this hobby it's I think I can be an easy partner to trade sell and deal with and I know when to hold them and know when to fold them and I know when to press the gas a little bit and I know when to like tap the brakes if you know what I mean so I knew I had to make it easy for him so that he wouldn't get frustrated and call the whole thing off um but uh yeah, we started going, we started comping. There were some things that I was surprised were so low. He was showing me the comps. And then it got to a point where we started to trust each other. Um, he knew that I was going to be pretty fair. Um, for for example, uh, there were six um, gold vinyl PSA 10s that were in the deal. And um, he's like, how about 100 bucks each flat? So 600 for all six. Now I could have argued and we could have said, well, let's look at uh, what other vinyls have done and, and this and that. And it was a Zeke. It was a Demarcus Lawrence. It was a Sean Lee. It was a Jameis Winston. It was a DeAndre Hopkins. I think there was a uh, Keenan Allen. So no superstars. Um, I was just like, mm, all right, cool. You know, like, I might leave, you know, I don't know if they're worth a little more than a hundred or not. Maybe, maybe one is worth two, maybe the Zeke's worth 200. I don't know. But again, that's just an example of where I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. So anyway, let me show you some, um, 
let me show you some pics here of what was in there. Okay, this green Tom Brady was in there. Another Tom Brady. Another Tom Brady. Uh, there was an Aaron Rodgers color matched. Another Aaron Rodgers color matched. Um, one of the bigger cards was this Tatis um, Topps Chrome out of 99. Uh, I think we comp that at around 1800 and I took 85% of that. There was <laughs> my dog. There was a blue ice Brunson in there. There was this one of one Jeter. I think we comped it at, I don't remember, 250 maybe. I can't remember. But I paid 160 plus grading for it. So that was in there. Uh, both these J rods were in there. I think they were 110 a piece. Um, this Glaber was in there. It was dirt cheap. This Correa was in there. Again, dirt cheap. I don't know if there's a picture, but there's also a blue Correa. There it is. Yep. There was a blue Correa that I let go, dirt cheap. I probably spent $2,500 on that uh, when I bought it. I, I It probably comped out at maybe like $400. <laughs> I took 85% of that. But anyway, here are the one, the so everything in this picture that is circled. The uh, Crystals Crown Royal Luca Auto was in there. The stained glass was in there. The studio was in there. Oh, this checkerboard was not in there. Cross that out. Um, the paper one in the middle here, um, that was in there. But mo I think the select up in the next to the studio was in there. I don't know. I was circling all the wrong cards here, but most of my good Lucas were uh, were up in the other room. Uh, let's see. This Brandon Ingram was in there. Again, I showed you the, the one uh, Jalen Brunson. It looks like that's all from this page. Uh the uh, red uh, garland uh, was in there. The DeJounte Optic Hollow was in there. The Steve Kerr at $20 for a PSA 9 Steve Kerr auto. He said even he was surprised at that comp, but I didn't care. Joe Montana was in there. Davis Mills was in there. The field level red prism PSA 9 Kyler Murray was in there. Zach Wilson, the white sparkle Singletary, the white sparkle Travis Etienne. The uh, so Silver Trevor Lawrence PSA 8. The Red Shimmer DK Metcalf. Uh, the Josh Jacobs Blue. The Marshawn Lynch uh, Blue Shimmer. The Orange uh, Marshawn was in there. So there's the six. Um, there's the six gold finals across the top. Jameis, Keenan Allen, DeAndre, Sean Lee, Demarcus Lawrence, and Zeke. So I got 600 right there for all six. Um, not including the 85%. Like he didn't, it was just a flat 600 on that. Um, and then it looks like every other card was in there. Basically every card on here that doesn't have an X was on there. So the Trayvon Diggs, you know what? This Michael Gallup was not in there either. The Blue Shimmer rookie. The DAC was, the two hollow DACs were, they were 150 each, dude. That hurts. The red crystals was in there, and the um, blue Tony Pollard PSA nine was in there. Uh, let's see. We talked about the the Brady's were in there. The green, the fireworks, the other green, the Aaron Rodgers shimmer, uh, or pulsar. Sorry, the green scope Rodgers. Silver Tua, Blue Tua, Tyreek Hill, both my Juju uh, short prints were in there. McCall Hardman, Red. Um, let's see, everything circled. The No Name Mahomes out of 10. Um, everything across the top. One of the nicer ones was this uh, Blue Shimmer Kelsey. They were all in there. Uh, this Judge Auto was in there, PSA 9. This Pete Rose Rookie Stars was in there. Now, I bought this for 13 and the last comp was like 18 so I got 85% of 18 I think it was around 1500 which I actually made a couple hundred bucks on that. The Green Bregman was in there. Kyle Tucker was in there. 
this is going to be fun editing all these cards in there. There were two of these Kyle Tucker uh, base autos. Uh, this Brandon Ingram was in there. So all told, there were 110 cards. You see them here. Even that Superman um, Ben Attendee, which I've had at 150 on eBay for, or 200 on eBay for months. Um, he really was intrigued by that card. He said, how much? I said, 200. He goes, how about 150? I said, done. Um, so there were some cards that I felt really good about the comps I got. There were some cards that I felt like I was being really generous. But if you can count with me, let's start with the stack next to the Lucas. Ready? You got one, two, three, four, five. Those 20s are 2K, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's right, 18 thousand dollars cash money i couldn't believe it 18k again the two biggest cards in, in my eyes were the p rose rookie and the tops chrome tatis i still can't believe <laughs> he goes when it was all said and done that I had, you can see, uh, where are my sheets? You can see them over here to the very left. You can see where there's some numbers um, on the other showcase right here. You can see, and you can see there's a 4174 across the side. That was me adding up all the numbers from that particular page. There were about five pages. <clears throat> they were all like in the three to 4K, um, you know, area. <clears throat> when we first started to add them up, he goes, this better be around 10K. <laughs> when he said that, I was like, damn, dude, this ain't going to happen. Because I knew it wasn't anywhere near 10K. He didn't say it better be. He goes, I hope this is around 10K. Nope. It was at like $18,068. He goes, call it an even 18. And he stuck his hand out there. Again, I know when to hold him and I know when to fold him. And I knew not to rip his arm off. So I was like, Okay, and I shook his hand, counted out this money, scooped it up, put it in my backpack. I said, take the case. You're going to need it, getting all this stuff home. I walked out with my little empty dolly. <laughs> as soon as me and my friends turned the corner, we were like little schoolgirls. Oh, my God, I can't believe you just told me that. What are we going to do with this money? Oh, my God, holy shit. And then we went upstairs into the room and JR was with us and <clears throat> started counting the money. And I said, man, I just feel like rolling around in this cash <clears throat> on the bed. <clears throat> what if, what, JR, I'm, there. I'm glad you were there to, <laughs> to experience that with us. Oh, that's why this is what just happened. Because um, I'm, I'm now literally down to one case and like a, a single row shoe box full of top loaded stuff, um, not top loaded, um, one touch stuff. <sighs> I dropped about uh, 12 cards off with VGS. Um, I took the slowest uh, service back, so I'll get those back in about three months. But yeah, I, I, I had 18K in my bag and I was like getting ready to go down to trade night. And it was like, I bought some, I. I I've done some big deals at Dallas. I got that Tiger Luca PSA 10 Prism right at the beginning of the Western Conference Finals last year when they were, when the Mavs were going up against the Warriors. When I got that card and I made the drive home, I was on cloud nine. I was on cloud nine. I was listening to basketball, the pregame show on the radio. There was a game that night. I couldn't. It was just like I, I, I sat back and I thought this was one of the good moments right here. This is one of the like moments when I felt like I was 12 again, you know, um, this was better. <laughs> this moment here was better. Um, not only did I get 18 K it was in cash, no shipping, uh, no taxes. Um, just 18 K and I cashed out 110 cards like that. So, dude, if you ever watch this, this the the sell the buyer of all the thank you, I owe you one. Um, but yeah, man, this this was the best moment in the hobby for me so far. 
And of course, my best friend Josh was with me. Um, and I know Josh like moves like all my moves feel like his moves just because we're that like we're we're really close and and this is a passion that we share. So he couldn't have been happier for me, and I know it. I don't know that's true. Um, again, I took all this money down to uh, trade night and I perused it and I bought one card, and I'll show it to you now. We are at. Gosh, I don't even know what we're at. Let's see. Let's check the time on this. 46 minutes. I'm going to pare this down. I'm going to edit some of this down. But what a, what a, what a weekend. So there was one card. I picked it up, and it's this. It's the uh, Tony Pollard Blue Ice PSA 10. Um, I sold all my CD Lamb autos. So I only have a couple CDs left. And kind of got a little pattern here. So I got the two blue ices of CD and Tony. And then I got the two... Oh, I got the two white sparkles as well. So that's kind of cool. Kind of made my foursome complete. Uh, and then the only other purchase, I'm, I bought a couple of the, the uh, graded guard uh, things for, the, for your slabs. And then I came across these. I think I'm going to do a little separate video on these, just about how amazing they are. But the graded guard booth, and I don't know if the graded guard guys make these, but had these. These were the hit of the show. Um, I remember a couple of shows ago, it was the chains and I have one hanging up on my wall with my Griffey upper deck in it. But this show, it was these, these are just super, super cool. They're huge acrylic blocks and they're heavy. They're really heavy. Um, but the graded they're you know, you, you put your card in a graded guard and then this thing from the top, just here, I'll show you on this just pops right off and then you can slide your card in and out and you got the, the grade this is a graded guard the plastic goes around um, they have different colors you can color match um, but I just went with clear I'm an understated type guy that way and then you just stick it in there and you just stick that on the top I'm telling you these things are amazing they're 40 bucks uh, at the shows, they're forty-five dollars online. They are already sold out of the PSA uh, slab holders online. I got one of each. I wish I'd have got more now, but here's the BGS. Thought I'd put my Mahomes field level. You know, speaking of this card, we uh, Josh and I decided that as we were leaving. Yesterday we thought, well, you know what, we we should probably hit up side rooms just because we're here, just to see. The first side room we went into had had a gold field level select Mahomes PS or BGS ten. I'm like, what are you doing in the side rooms? Oh, my dogs are starting to bark. My son's coming down. It's early in the morning here making this video, but anyway, there you have it. It was insane. And uh, best moment in the hobby for me so far. So thanks for watching. It's a long one. Uh, until the next one. See ya. Bye.